Trish and Haley, and we're on the docks in the port of Manzanillo, Mexico, and we're again with the Atlantis. Fantastic. So, Haley, what have we been doing the last few days? So the past couple of days, we've been mobilizing the ship. So what does mobilizing mean? It means that we're setting up our home and our workspaces for the next 30 days. So all of our equipment has been uh, in the main lab for the last couple of days and we've been putting it into the proper lab, setting up certain equipment. So we're setting up Sentry, we're setting up Alvin, we're setting up the tow cam, setting up our wet lab and our analytical lab and our geophysics lab. Yeah, so basically what this is doing is creating a workflow so while we're at sea we can be as efficient as possible. Um, like we mentioned, we're going to be doing works 24 hours a day. So we have to be able to quickly move from one station to the next and uh, get things done. So mobilization is kind of important. So for the next few minutes, we're gonna show you some behind the scenes of what that mobilization looks like and then what our lab space looks like and hopefully you'll learn a little bit or just at least see what it is that we're doing on board. Um, but yeah, it's been a pretty exciting experience. Right. Yeah, we're having a blast. All right, see you guys later, bye. In here. <gasps> Espresso, Espresso maker. <laughs> and look in here. Oh, that's mine. Espresso hot chocolate. <laughs> Must hide this now. Organizing our stuff, trying to figure out where to put it so we can work efficiently. Yeah, do you feel like it's efficient? Uh, not yet, <laughs> but hopefully it will be. <laughs> and finding everything in all the boxes. Yep, this one's full of, looks like coffee grounds all over the place. Uh, that, that's probably rock, right? Or is it really coffee? Uh, no, I think it's actually coffee. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, Sherelle, what do you have there? have a microscope that you can use to look at rocks when they come in from the dredges, when they come in from Alvin, so we can determine what minerals that we can see there and describe the kind of rock we have. Awesome! Oops. <laughs> so, the microscopes, you know, we know what to do with. So why do we have so many microscopes? You can never have enough microscopes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only answer I can think of at the time. <laughs> perfect because it does not have Bluetooth. I'm not sure that these still work. <laughs> but it, you well, know, classic. We've got to have music. We're to gonna pick pump last the bass. <laughs> Those are ancient. All right, everybody. What are you doing today? Mobilizing! <laughs> Unpacking the mess that we made uh, two days ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's like chaos times ten. So what's going on in the main lab? So we're setting up the main lab. We're unpacking boxes. We're getting all of the stuff that needs to go to the rock lab to the two rock labs. I am setting up the tape drawer currently. <laughs> so we will know where to find all of the tape we may need. But we're just getting our lab set up, our space, so we'll have for the next month everything set up to put away. In the so Denny, what are you doing there? <laughs> Rigging up the sound system. Oh, so the what about these old rock speakers? And, rock and roll patrology. Rock and roll patrology. <laughs> so you've got nicer speakers now. Apparently. Dorsey made the executive decision to use these speakers. Dorsey? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like She's these were made in 1980 and those were made in 1990, so I thought that they might have a little better sound quality. <laughs> All right, Bridget, what are you working on? 
So I'm working with Dan Fernari on getting a lot of the electronics set up for our tow cam. Um, these instruments in particular are called junction boxes and we use them as kind of the on-off switches for a lot of our instruments. So they're a way of connecting the battery to the actual instrument such as a camera or a strobe or a laser and then we can use specific plugs to turn those instruments on and off. All right, that yeah. looks pretty cool. They're also quite heavy. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things to keep in mind is these are going to the bottom of the ocean, right? So yeah. they have to be really well packaged so that they can handle the pressures, the water, everything that goes on yeah, down there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Bridget. Mm -hmm. So Emma, what's going on? So Dan is aligning these two lasers right here so that they're exactly 10 centimeters apart on this box so that we can ensure we have the proper measurements when we put it in the water. So right now, he's lining them up on those two targets that are exactly 10 centimeters apart. And where will this be used? I believe it's used on the tow cam. Yeah, so this will give us a scale bar. Exactly. is done. <laughs> Do you guys feel like you've mobilized? I feel I'm like feeling I've... very mobilized right now. I've labeled a lot of stuff with my name on it. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed Haley's on like everything. Yep. Don't touch my chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Why was Haley's name on my cocoa? <laughs> <laughs> In addition to the like 10 laptops that we unpacked from the various Woods Hole storage containers that we unloaded, we have 15 5 terabyte hard drives and 10 2 terabyte hard drives for a grand total of 95 terabytes of storage space. One terabyte is usually enough for most people, more than enough for someone on their personal computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>